Okay, so I've just pulled my window templates out. These are for the lower side windows. The boat itself has its main saloon windows and then it has another side down along the companionway. Okay, so I've got the external window templates here. I'm just going to mark them on the side inserts and, uh, and then I can basically work out how to do the side windows. important to understand that these inserts aren't the exact windows that I need. Only the outer perimeter of around three centimetres will allow me to adhere the Perspex windows in place. The actual cutout will need to be determined from the inside as we have a slightly different bulkhead arrangement and obviously we don't want windows crossing over bulkheads from the inside in the saloon and the cabins. Essentially these were inserted into the mould to, to guarantee that I get these shape. Now I actually added 10 mil of H80 foam here so that I've got a nice thick window profile from the inside and then I peel plied it so it's nice and smooth so it's not going to take a lot of fairing to get this if I decide to just paint it. I may well line it with a liner depending on the sort of look we're after whether I want a sort of a padded look or just a nice smooth shiny look we can just wipe clean. I'd rather not have it pass through a bulkhead and have a window across a bulkhead I just don't think that's good enough. I've done a smaller window here in the rear, uh, just in the, the companionway here, back heading towards the stern cabin on the starboard side. So this is a nice small window, and then another big one here. So you can see the light that's gonna flood into here when this is finished, is that basically got a, a huge window here, as well as the hatch, and there is a port light that goes in here, which leads into the cabin or into the cockpit that actually is openable. So it's a opening port light to let airflow right through this whole cabin here but yeah that's a nice um a nice idea having this extra light coming through here i have been in a lot of boats where there just isn't much light in the cabins uh, we want a nice airy boat we certainly don't want to be blocking ourselves out same deal here in the forward cabin started to mark this one out i've used the template on the outside but those templates were the original templates that i've used on the outside um, were for the window that actually passed through here. So I've had to determine here, I've come back seven centimeters or 70 millimeters from the bulkhead. Right, eh? so I'm gonna drill just here and here so that it'll determine the end point of this window. It's hard to work out from outside in where the bulkhead is. So if I put a hole in here, I'll know that that's the end. And then uh, I can use the existing template that's already drilled out there, drawn out there. Same deal here. And I'll do the same down on this window down here. So I'm just roughing these windows in. I'm going to do a nice tidy up, get the radius and everything right, but I'll just get the windows in so I've got more light to function in here. Basically cut them square, but they will have nice little radiuses on them. Just the window mullions alone. I want you to have a look at the cross section. Can you see that? That's the outer layer, and that's the inner layer. And this is the windows. Just these inserts, how thick they are. And then they get thicker because as I went out to the outside of the insert, I put about six layers of, dot triple, of 600 double bias, like six layers over and above what's there. So these window inserts are structural as well as cosmetic. Happy lad. <laughs>
see how much more light we've got down here now. I can't take my mask off, there's still a little bit too much dust blowing around. But even in the bedroom here. Now I'm starting to really see what this boat's going to feel like. So happy. So now I've got these lower windows cut out. They're just roughed in. I'm gonna do a nice job on the corners to get the radiuses right. I'll turn my attention over to this side. Now, what I'm actually doing, I've gotta allow enough room to get a laminate from this module to the wall. So what I've done is I've measured back seven centimeters, 70 mils, which will give me at least um, 50 mil of tabbing for all the modules onto the wall there and in fact i can go over it doesn't really matter i'm just going to trim it back but the nice thing is i'll get a really good tab with all of my modules and bulkheads back to the actual deck and in here i've also marked this one now i've still got to cut out this lifting mount that's on this wall here and uh essentially here you'll notice that i've been putting a small dot now what i do is i drill it here and drill it here so that i know the edge but i need to drill it inside the actual uh, margin of the window they are actually marked on the outside i'm actually marking them inside because i really want to get this shape right i don't want to overcut from the other side that'll be a problem same deal here what i'm trying to do here you can see i'm trying to follow the contour of the module which is sort of slightly on an angle i'm trying to make that follow along and then once again back at the bulkhead do it straight and the same up in the front. So I'll drill a hole through the window insert, and that way I know outside when I'm grinding where I've got to stop cutting, <laughs> I hope. So as I keep bringing up, we've had nothing but wind, and then the last month we've headed into what they call the La Nina, which is uh, uh, an incredibly wet season so hopefully we're not going to get any fires this year and I'm really praying I'd much rather have rain than, than fires but that's brought with it its own problems the wind is whipping up the dust around the area here and uh, and it's depositing itself all over my deck I've just got to look past it and stop trying to clean it there's no point it's just going to be filthy until the day I polish it up at the end but now that Janet has been up here and um, cleaned all of the plasticine that was remnant from the demolding off the window inserts i can see where there's a couple of little repairs needed around those window inserts ultimately they're all going to be buried in black sycophlex anyway but what i'm actually doing here i've rough cut out the window insert i'm actually going to use a hole saw to get the perfect circle on the end here so basically this will drill out here and essentially give me the rounded points that i need to have some nice looking windows from the inside so i'm going to get onto that now i've already done the other side and uh, i just need to do these ones here and then i can cut them out clean and then start to repair and just just tidy up the uh the window inserts so that they're ready to put windows in at a very very later date but that's all It's always something that slows you up. Broke the drill, the pilot hole on my Sutton bloody hole saw. How the hell does a drill bit break when you're drilling straight in? Bizarre. Anyway, have to go and make a new one. One of the massive concerns I have about this boat is good engine access. It's really getting and playing on my mind about how I'm gonna access the motors. 
Um, they're under a bunk here in the rear cabin. That's one of the reasons why I haven't put all this structure back in around the kitchen and the galley and the wardrobes here is because I need to sort this out and it's time to do it. Um, I've also got another dilemma is I can't lift this bed out until I jack this lid back up again. I need to be able to get into here. So I've got a hell of a lot to do in this rear cabin area to make sure that it's all ready by the time I physically lock the, the, uh, the, the deck down. Now, it stands to reason that I've got good access already if I put a hatch in the bed itself. And what I've decided to do is I'm gonna use the lid of the engine box as a template for the, the hatch. So this will be on struts. I'm gonna be able to simply lift this up like this and have access in there. Now I have a problem. The motor is 70 centimeters below that bed. So I also need to come up with a way that is going to give me access to the front, the belt, to the impeller and the works. So what I intend to do is have this hatch open and this part here, a section of this will fold back underneath. So as it folds underneath, it'll be on a piano hinge here, then I'll have full almost walkthrough access. I won't be able to walk through, but I'll certainly be able to sit there and dangle my legs over and have access to the impeller and the front beds, uh, uh, the pulleys, the belts, and everything in the front of the, the engine. Um, what I'm gonna have to do though, is I'm gonna have to cut this out and then reinforce underneath this bed base, probably up in the factory, provided I can get it out, and I'll just have to cut a couple of inches off it to get it out. And, uh, and then I'll reinforce it up in the factory, bring it back in, and it'll go in pretty quickly because it has to be in there before I lock this down. Uh, I won't have any further way of getting it in here now that the lid's on top. And as soon as I glue that down, that's it. There's no way to go forward. So what I'll probably have is a door down here. As it lifts up, it'll fold back under and then it'll be a complete U-shaped opening where I can physically get into the motor. I should even be able to, if it's not too hot, crawl across the motor into the back there. I've got an alternate rear access to get to the shafts and the rudder system at the back there that doesn't involve a door in the steps. I'm trying to avoid that at all costs. I don't like the idea of having doors that open up on the rear sugar scoops just in case it's a fallen sea and flooding the motor. I had my mate John here yesterday, they went sailing the Whit Sundays last year and I cleaned up. The place looked like a brilliant boat, and look at it now. <laughs> Don't know why I bother cleaning up. But I've got to keep on top of the dust. I cannot work in a dusty environment, I refuse to, to be honest. It's just not worth my health. And to be honest, the cleaner I can keep it, the less airborne dust I'm going to have. I just don't want plastics flying everywhere. Um, as soon as I grind, I vacuum. It's just part and parcel of the method that I use. It is a fit inefficient, but it is uh, certainly better for me from a point of view of uh, satisfaction. But yeah, it's a brothel now, and I'm going to take this up into the factory and uh, and start to work on it. I don't know how I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to have to do it in situ. I don't really think I'm going to get a chance to get it out unless I jack the deck back up, which is going to be a while. Well, now I've got the hatch cut out. I've got to work out how to brace this thing. It's going to be uh, a, a couple of ribs and certainly a rebate that's going to hold this hatch lid. This is actually upside down, so the hatch will go the other way. But I need to brace it from underneath. And that will be with a series of 30 millimeter battens here, here and then a longer one across the back there. And then I have to put an um, insert rib all the way around the bottom of it to hold this in place when it comes down. There'll be some gas struts here that'll assist in the lifting of it because it's not going to be light. But by the same token, I need the rigidity in the, um, in the piece to basically hold, obviously, a bed 
and uh, and for dampening of noise and uh, and obviously heat coming through the floor here. So that's my plan at this stage. Okay, I've got all the pieces together that I need. I've basically got to put an insert around the um, the hatch itself. It's like a rebate so that when it's up, the lid will have something to physically sit on. So I've made all of that up. And basically, it's going to resemble this. This. Now, I've been lucky that I've got so much laminated foam core that I don't have to re-laminate it. All I have to do is glue it down and then put one layer of, or two layers of a really light 100 weight cloth over the top and the job is done. So really, really lucky in that respect. So I never ever throw out foam core that's laminated and this makes a perfect rib to the, uh, to the, the bed frame or the bed bunk. And essentially, that's a completed article. And that's all I'm going to need. What I'll have to do though is I will have to bevel the edges of them. I'll do that with a sander and I'll be able to glass over the top and then ultimately I'll be able to paint it or flow coat it however I decide to finish it. More likely to, uh, to flow coat the underside of this and ultimately once again it's going to have an insulation and fireproofing um, up underneath here. Obviously to deal with the heat that's going to be generated by the engine and also um, any chance of fire coming through and also it'll be a noise dampener as well. So yeah, that's gonna be great, a really good solution. Okay, next morning, I'm gonna basically remove all of these uh, weights here. Now what I need to do is carefully sand a bevel onto the edges of all of these so that I can laminate them over. It's very, very important that I get a good laminating edge and, and, a, and a bevel shape so I can consolidate this down. The last thing I wanna do is go underneath there into the engine room and scalp myself on razor sharp glass. I intend to make this all look as neat as possible so that not only is it easier to uh, to put uh, insulation on as well as uh, as keeping it nice and neat for when we're running our hands in underneath the floor of the bedding. We don't want to cop any nasty dags. So there's quite a lot to do here. I'm gonna get in and give it a good sand, sand the edges off. Might even do a little bit of laminating today. I do have a lot of work to do around the uh, edges of the engine hatch because that, that needs to be filled and cored. So no point in leaving it as foam. Ultimately that will degrade or delaminate. So that'll actually have to be filled, sanded, and then glassed over and then the hatch made to fit. I've stranded, a castaway, and I'm now sure of no stranger in the sky. Right, uh, so I've just done a heap of work and didn't film any of it, but I've got this beautiful rounded edge on this lid here, and uh, and I've left about what we call a 20% piece slot to allow for glass and a little bit of paint. Don't want to have too much of a gap there, but that's actually looking really good, and uh, and the smooth edges on the rebate, which have got two layers of 100 gram, what I call surfboard cloth around there and uh, this is looking really really fine um, to be honest I've routed the edges 
I've got the router and uh, and routed these. So I've got this beautiful sort of reweight rounded radius here, another radius here. So we'll have two stainless gas struts, one here, one there to support it. And then the other part of the door will actually fold under and clip up underneath that. Now that's going to have fireproofing mat on it, obviously, or foam, and that'll fold up underneath there and hold in place. So I've just got to work out how to do all that. That's going to be a little bit of a little bit of an exercise in uh, in engineering, but yeah, that's looking really good. That's my engine access on the starboard side now, almost ready for glass, just to glass the edges of the lid, and then uh, I'll be ready for a bit of fairing, a bit of painting, and installation. So I've just rolled this back over, given it a good sand, and the lid is here. Now, I laminated that three or four hours ago. I'm going to leave that overnight. I think, uh, you know, no point in ripping it off now. Just want to make sure it's going to fit uh, before I go ahead with any more cosmetic work, because if I continue to laminate on it or start sanding it too prematurely, it might wreck all the work I've already done. But yeah, that's going to look absolutely superb and give me brilliant access into my engine bay.